Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of this wonderful series. In this video, I'm going to talk, uh, yeah, I'm Ashdeep Bhaiya. And in this video, we are going to talk about uh, internships and uh, SOPs. If you don't know what SOP is, SOP is basically a project, like a project under a professor. And you can actually get graded for that. And that's that's added to your GPA. Uh, and the like the projects that you you did in your technical clubs and departments. So uh, clubs like the electronics club or blockchain club or uh, basically yeah, robotics or the coding club. So yeah, these projects. Let's let's get started. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, let's start with PS One. So PS One and PS Two. After what experience? What is it? And how is the procedure? And uh, which PS did you choose? Yeah. For those who are not familiar with the term, PS1 or PS2 is basically Practice School 1 and Practice School 2. So what Practice School is, it's a, it's a feature that is provided by BITS. That is, uh, they make you do two compulsory internships. One, the PS1 is of two months, around two months. That is there after your second year, in the second year summer. Uh, two rights can also do it in the third year summer. They have an option. Uh, and PS2 is basically a six-month internship for single degree students like me. But for dual degree students, they can do a one-year internship as well. Uh, they can basically do two different internships or one 12 months internship or two six months internship as well as part of PS2. Uh, now, what PS1 is like, I have not done PS2 yet, so I can talk about PS1. And but PS1 is a two month internship, and most of the companies that come during the PS1 times are the good companies are mostly research labs and some like government funded labs, some other private labs, and there are a lot of companies as well. So there are like more than 100, there are more than 200 something like practice school and stations that visit all the three campuses of BITS and the PS uh, practice school allotment is a, what do we call it, is a, is same for the all three campuses. So for any practice school, you will find students of all the three campuses in your practice school. So I particularly went to a practice school station called Siri, CSIR Siri, uh, which is there in Pilani. It's like, it's just adjacent to the BITS Pilani campus. It's just adjacent to that. So, in the summer of that, I like stayed in the Pilani campus and we used to like cycle to the nearest building that is the Siri and uh, that's what that's what my PS was. So Siri actually is an electronics research lab. Their full form is Central Electronics Engineering Research Institute, but they have like a big division of computer science, not computer science, but more of data oriented research. And those include topics such as robotics, uh, deep learning research, machine learning research, and uh, so a lot of CS students also go there. So for example, in my time, uh, like in 20. 19 of summer, uh, there were like more than 20, 25 students from Goa campus itself to that particular CS, uh, particular station, and more than 10 of the students were CS. So uh, the work that we did, most of the CS students worked upon some kind of deep learning research or uh, machine learning research, any research problem. I particularly worked upon a research problem called face antispoofing, uh, but that is basically like before one or two years, this trend was really popular to use a front-facing camera of your phone to unlock your uh, unlock the phone basically. But now it's proven that this is not really Secure than using the vertical iris or the fingerprint scanner. So, but still, it, it is really popular and a lot of phones also use it. You know, iPhones and everything, it uses it. So, our task was to make the front facing camera, just the RGB camera, a lot effective using deep learning so that it can detect if the uh, image that is being uh, sent to the camera is it a spoof image or a real image. So, that was the research problem that we had. So, yeah, that's what we did for the one and a half months and for that internship. We did a lot of like uh, reading research papers, finding out novel approaches to how do we tackle this problem. And okay. particularly our project was really good. Like we had funding from a company. We did not get any money, but the institute has funding from a company. So our project was taken seriously by the, uh, what do we call, by the professors and the staff that, that is there in that research lab. And it was a really good learning experience. We get to interact with us, PhD, PhD fellows and some seniors research scientists at Siri, and it was really a good experience. So yeah, that's what practice school is, and that's what my experience with practice school are. Great, great. So let's talk about the projects and the SOPs that you did during your college life. I'm not sure that you have like around five SOPs career throughout your uh, like up that. So what's your experience with that, and how to actually get into one uh, of these, and how to choose your professors and stuff like that? Yeah. So. I have done total of, I've done like three SOPs and two SOPs I'm currently, it's not just SOPs, like SOP basically means study oriented project, uh, DOPs as well, design oriented project and LOPs as well. So basically any oh, formal yeah. project. So yeah. I've done like three formal project till now and two I'm doing this semester. Uh, like most of them are in different fields and uh, with some of the different professors, some of the same professors. And I also like did some informal projects under some particular, some other professors as well. Uh, my most of the projects that I did were involved with some kind of development task 
that was related to like the academic division of our college some was related to like benchmarking some particular service or like the this semester what i'm working upon with a under a project with vinaxer that is particularly with some benchmarking i can't more tell more about it uh, apart from this like yeah so different projects involved with different stuff so in the like two one i worked with the maths faculty and that prof, that project was mostly related to computational mathematics and applying particular computational technique to solve a particular kind of matrix problem effectively so that was the first project first formal project that i did and mm -hmm. after that it was like related and other general related like projects and uh, some particular development projects which were used in like the academic system of our college and yeah, yeah some interesting projects great yeah. uh so yeah let's find so how did you approach actually approach professors and what exactly is like the thing kaisa hota hai so how do you approach professors okay. what's the informal process or yeah yeah so there are multiple ways you can do this the first uh, the first and the, like the most straightforward way is to just mail a professor or like just go to the if it was on campus if we're all on campus you can just go to a faculties like uh, any kind of working hours for a particular course and just knock the door and do something like that okay. uh, and then when you approach a professor just tell them that this is what i'm interested in i'm interested in this field and you're also working in this field and i want to do a project you can ask for a particular project that the professor is working upon or you can make up your own project and present it to the professor that this is what i want to work upon and mm -hmm. usually professors do consider uh, if you are interesting if you are like somewhat regular with the courses and everything if you have like done a course under that professor and the professor knows you by name then he will he or she will probably give you the like a foreign project under the next semester but sometimes if the professor don't know you like uh, they must mostly ask you to do a informal project or like a 3 4 2 3 months of informal work under that professor before you finally get a formal course this is specially true for computer science like other departments don't have these things but the reason is that there are very less number of cs professors and there are a lot of students who want foreign projects under those yeah. uh, professors so yeah that's how you basically approach a professor that's the most straightforward way another way is if you know any senior who is working on a, like a big project uh, under a particular professor so mm -hmm. there are like biology uh, what do we call projects which are going on for multiple semester there are cs projects also which are going for multiple semester so if you know a particular senior who is working in that you can ask him can you please involve me into that project and uh, like get interested in what he is working upon help him into the project and he can introduce to the faculty and that's also a really good way that's also a lot of my friends actually got their first foreign project uh, in their two to like getting a project in two to is somewhat more difficult than getting a project in your third year it's because when you have passed like second year especially in computer science you have done a lot of fundamental courses and then you know some knowledge of uh, actually coding so uh, that's what i feel that getting a co getting a project in the second year is somewhat more difficult but it's also like possible uh, in both ways is possible you can approach a senior who is working you can approach a professor directly uh, there are other ways as well you can make your own project and ask the professor to guide you in that project that's also possible and that's what most of the iits like work upon you make your own project and you ask a faculty to advise you on that project uh, so that's also possible so yeah there are different ways you can do this yeah okay so let's talk about the internships that you kind of did during your uh, first like the initial years of your college so you told that you did an internship right after first year and also i had this doubt okay see uh, there are a lot of these companies or new startups which which want a social media marketing uh, guy or which want a business analyst or do, like uh, basic content writers so did you explore all these other domains or you were kind of focused on cs and keep the like i want just tech related work and stuff like that did you explore other things or yeah this is a question so like i can share my experience and uh, don't take me granted for this because i also don't know the logistics of everything yeah. uh, so i was never interested in the non like computer non like coding internships or anything like that uh -huh. so like i have been approached for some particular like roles growth role or something like a startup or something but i was never really interested into those things so uh, like this is what i feel uh, if you are interested in computer science and you know this is your focus and you want to like get into this field then why do you want to like work in other stuff you can get a paid internship in these things in fact the pay is better in these things so why do you want to like go go work for a content writer or something like that that makes sense if you are interested in like content writing if you are really good in writing and i am personally not at all good in writing i did not i like my language skills are zero at best so uh, 
that that's what i feel so if you are really interested in just the development side and you, you really want to like explore computer science there's no real benefit of doing a content writing or these kind of internships because they are not going to add anything to your skill set that you want to develop so i would say target internships which is going to expand your skill set and are in the field that you want to work in so let's say you want to become a back end developer or a what do we call a blockchain developer you can try to find startups which work in these fields and they can give you some work into these fields and you can get some exposure and that's how you can grow uh, that's what i feel apart from this my personal internship experience has been like the all the internships that i did were direct were directly related to like coding like the main tasks that i did in all the internships were coding was coding and except the series one series one was more research but it also involved a lot of coding as well so yeah in the first year i did the internship with bio of india and in that my task was to work upon the front end or like the control system for the 3d bio printer we were written we were going to we were writing the everything in python and i implemented some logging functions into that and uh, how do we maintain the data we how are we going to like collect the data from our architect stats from our customers and all those things so i worked upon that and in the siri i worked upon like the deep learning research uh, part that we have already discussed and uh, yeah. in siri i also like got introduced to hpcs which is like high performance computers and handling hpc is also really interesting task so uh, that's also something that i got introduced to first time in siri and after that i did some like freelancing work in the third year which was related to like again coding uh, android development mostly and mm. after the third year i worked with google for the summer internship and in google my task my work was mostly related to back end migration stuff and i worked with the security team like chrome security team i worked with chrome security and uh, the main project that i'm working upon was a utility which is used by a lot of different google clients open source projects to fuzz their software so it's a technical term so you don't need to worry about all these things okay. uh, so my main task in google internship was related to like front end and back end development and some of the infrastructure work that is like google cloud and all those things so yeah thanks a lot bhaiya uh, in the next week we are going to talk about the actual internship and the ppo and uh, placement process that happens in every campus on campus placements uh, If you like this video, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more such college related and productivity and content like that. Thanks a lot.